and here she is back in the dock safe and sound and this is what this rig looks like full length I can't use those great big rods off the front because I can't lift them straight up but I, I tight line fish anyway so it doesn't matter to me and when I'm sitting in that chair over there on the right man I just pull them right in off the side no problem besides that I net them anyway so all right well we're back home time to flay some fish and have a fish fry tonight see you guys later here are my friends is a sink full of nice slab crappies I'm gonna put a blade to them and put them in some well actually I'm gonna release them in Lake Crisco and then oh yeah he still wants to go back to Lake Crisco see you in a bit well I made it back to the house look at here she like got a whole bowl full of guts and a whole bowl full of fillets and this is the last one and you'll see I also save all the fish eggs because I love crappie eggs now, I know some of you will say are you kidding me until you try it so what I do is I kind of cut around like that then I just kind of zip down through here so I can access that and then I just dig my fingers in there and pop them crappie eggs out like that voila and once you rinse them off and batter them up they are so delicious but then I just cut down the backbone with my little flan knife here I stop short flip it over so nice and flat cut that side off tip it over like this here and it just falls out do the other side, same thing. And notice I don't cut like this, I turn it because I want this meat up on the shoulders here. Same thing, cut him on down. They say it's pretty good when you're done flaying, you can read a newspaper through it, so didn't waste any meat. And then I got to take the rib cage out, so I'll just hook it under there and just trim that out, and we got a nice fillet. Whoop, that goes in the bad, not the good. And one more. All right, once we get to, and there's another fillet there, so once we get these, here they're all done, once we get them rinsed off, and don't over rinse your crappie fillets. When you put them in the sink, rinse them with cold water, but rinse off all the little, you know, few scales, a little blood, that kind of stuff, but don't keep rinsing them and rinsing them and rinsing them, because you'll take all the oil out of the fish, and that's where the flavor is. So, we're going to do a little cooking here in a little bit. All right, our temperature's rolling up on 350 degrees, I got about an inch and a half of pure canola oil in there. You can use peanut oil, you can use whatever you want, unless your people got peanut allergies, but I use canola oil. And we're rolling this in what used to be Shotgun Red's catfish and crappie breading mix. One at a time, just kind of tumble them in the bowl. I'm pulling it out of a little bit of water, liquid over here, so that the flay is wet. Shake off the excess, tumble it in that good Minnesota dry fish breading like you'd have at shore lunch, only better because it's ours. And we don't want to load the pan too much, so we'll start out with about four fillets. That should be about enough right there. All right, I told them little crappies I was going to release them in Lake Crisco, so there you go. And again, this is what I love about my backpacking machine. My little beat up vac master. In fact, if you check out our cooking channel, which is Cooking with Shotgun Red on YouTube, you'll see my comparison to one of these and a food saver. And this is something you can't do with a food saver when you got extra right out of the fluid there fillets left over. Chuck them in here. Right now the food saver would be sucking all the juice out of that bag and it would be going into the motor, but it doesn't do that in a chamber machine. Seal it up. I love this thing. And look at here. Just like out of the store. No juice goes that way because it sucks it out of the chamber. It's so cool. Well, into the freezer with this for the next fry. That's what I love about one of these old vac masters. You know, I will mention that I've shot this whole thing today with my cell phone, even out on the lake, so I'm shooting it with my cell phone in here to stay consistent. Now, one thing about cast iron, once you get up to about 350, you do have to back it off high just a little bit. See how it starts to almost burn, but I didn't let it get that bad, and I turned it. But that's the only pan that I've ever used kicking on high and cooking like that 
where it started to burn the fish just a little bit because the cast iron produces so much heat down there. But look at these, aren't they just beautiful? And you don't want to cook them too long because you can overcook fish. Now it's time for my delicacies. It's time for the crappie eggs. I've already got them battered up and I'm going to do this in a hurry before it gets kind of to the center of them because if you try this recipe just put it in the same fish breading as soon as you get them in there cover them with one of those. Hear them? Because they start popping almost like popcorn sometimes they'll break open. I'm going to move this out of the way. Hear them going crazy? You do want to cover them up. Because they'll fight with you for nail. I got another four layers of paper towels here. And it doesn't take long. Now I'm going to kind of hide behind the shield. Hopefully the shield doesn't get any of this here. Just kind of tumble them around a little bit to make sure that they get all sides. That was nice to me. Because normally they attack you. But they are so delicious. Now I know you're probably thinking, crappie eggs, are you kidding me? Actually, we had bullheads, and I'm talking about yellow belly bullheads up in Iowa years ago. And I'm going to talk about mud cats that you use for fish and flatheads. I get the point. I'm talking southern Minnesota, northern Iowa in the spring. That's why they have hundreds of bullhead feeds up there. Because they're so delicious. But the eggs, when they're yellow, oh, they're just delicious. So I thought, I'll try crappie eggs one day. They're just as good. Okay, and it don't take long. Look at them in there. See them little saddles? They're just outstanding. I know you've thrown away 300,000 pounds of them before, but you try it one time. And you'll be hooked. Alright, here we go. We'll see if we can get them out without them fighting us. Alright, I think, did we make it? This last little one, we made it without it popping. Now we'll throw some more fish in there, but I just wanted to show you these crappie eggs, how delicious they are. And they, oh, maybe I can break one open for you here, if it's not too hot here. Let me show you something. The inside of them, see? They're almost like little teeny zillions of little eggs cooked so nice. And as soon as this cools off, this, ouch, it's going, it don't make me take me long to look at a horseshoe, does it, Sheila? As soon as this cools off, it's going right in my mouth. It's absolutely delicious. Let's get some more fish in here. And I think this is kind of, take a look at this. We got the fish here and crappie eggs here. And we'll kind of end our video with this. So thanks, everybody, for watching. And Appreciate if you subscribe to our channel and uh, hope this has been a lot of fun today.